I don't feel like adulting today. I really don't. But apparently that's what I'm going to have to do. So, welcome Climate Viewers. This is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com with facts minus fear porn. And I'm here to give everybody a good tongue lashing because I think it's about time. So, I recently put up a video on YouTube Converting the ionosphere into a laboratory without walls, active ionospheric research with HARP by Bob McCoy. Um, this was given at the weather modification conference that I went to in uh, January in Texas. And I've got the details here. It was actually at the 15th conference on space weather. And you can read all the details there, links to the original sources and all that sort of stuff. So, apparently, the comments got a little out of hand. And, you know, this is something that I have to deal with regularly. Um, you know, the people on YouTube are crazy. People on Facebook are crazy. People on Twitter, crazy. Um, and I don't want to feel like, you know, I'm adding to the problem. You know, my, my whole goal all along has been to try to separate fact from fiction to, you know, really get to the nitty gritty and bring you the truth. Because there are enough people out there making up stuff um, just to make a buck. Um, I could be a fear porn artist and have 500,000 subscribers in two months. Be like that. Um, because I know enough facts to add some fiction to it make it scary package it pretty and uh it would be off to the races i'd be you know making a hundred thousand dollars a month as opposed to the measly change that i get from youtube so this isn't about money for me this is about getting the story straight and when i see comments like uh talking about the staff at harp hang them all um, how do we destroy it? Uh, you know, I kind of have to take a step back and go, is this helpful? Am I, am I really doing my part? Um, and what do I do about this? So anyway, as a result, um, the people over at Harp got a little bit scared and, they took down my video or attempted to, um, you know, and I received a copyright strike and, you know, I went into the whole process of making a counterclaim because the university of Alaska Fairbanks does not own the copyright to that video. It is copyright. The American meteorological society. I've done this many times. Um, but regardless, I decided to reach out to the University of Alaska Fairbanks on the phone. And I called a, la a lady by the name of Sue and we spoke and, you know, she agreed to retract the copyright claim. But during that discussion, she repeatedly stated that, you know, there are many staffers at the Harp facility who are in fear for their lives. And, you know, that's where, you know, I can, I can relate. Um, I had a rival YouTube channel make 500 YouTube videos about me, uh, 2000 tweets to my police department that I was a pedophile during those YouTube videos. They ranged from me wearing KKK, um, uniforms to Nazi uniforms to, um, gay porn. Um, and during that year and a half, I received well over 30 death threats, um, some of which were very, very credible. And I still receive death threats today. But regardless, um, I can relate. So I told, you know, Sue on the phone, look, that's, that's not the goal here. Um, it never was the goal. And if you'll remove the copyright strike, I'll just delete the damn video. Cause it doesn't really mean that much to me. You know, I've been doing this for quite some time 
And uh, she came back with, well, I spoke with Bob and, you know, Bob McCoy. And his main concern is that there's a photo of a staffer in the video. And, you know, we are in fear for our lives. I mean, and rightfully so, because, you know, you go read any of the comments pretty apparent that there are a lot of freaking crazy people. I mean, we've seen what's been going on with the political theater, um, you know, with, you know, all these Democrat, you know, senators and, you know, just lunatics saying, you know, get in their face, kick them while they're down, start a fight. Um, and we've seen the results, you know, senators being shot on baseball fields. So that kind of rhetoric is dangerous. And, you know, I've never wanted to be a part of that kind of problem. Um, I condone, you know, condone civility. And I always say attack ideas, not people. And I do my very best to police my comments on YouTube to make sure that I don't allow comments that advocate violence to stand, period. You have free speech in this country. The United States is the greatest country on the planet because of our right to free speech. But that does not give you the right to make threats. Um, that is not free speech. It never will be. Um, that's assault at, at, at a minimum. And you're encouraging others to do violent acts. You're the problem. Um, I've never heard anybody, you know, from harp or any of these scientists i've ever spoken to say that they intentionally want to kill people or advocate that they kill people i've just heard senators and eric holder you know and uh hillary clinton you know say let's not be civil so the, the difference between the science community is they're curious by nature i'm curious by nature i think that most of my viewers are curious by nature and that's that's cool you know what i mean it's good to be curious um but you know bob and sue came back with hey you know you don't have to delete the video if you'll just block out the photo of the you know staffer bob you know regrets putting that in there and so i did that and i also did something else that i've never done on any video i've ever made in the 300 videos i did i disabled the comments for this video um, and I hate doing that, you know, but I mean, this is specifically, you know, a scientist being as forthright as he can, uh, you know, about what they're doing up there at HARP. And, you know, I, I see a distinct difference between the U S Navy office of Naval research, the U S air force research lab using HARP. And a bunch of um, college, you know, kids trying to get degrees using HARP. Um, when the military is using it, you know that it is for military purposes. You know that there is a possibility of something nefarious going on. With the scientists, with the University of Alaska, I, you know, I just don't see it the same way. Maybe you guys can call me crazy. I think that a lot of the, the comments that I've, I've seen are downright crazy. Um, and, it, and it goes a little further. So, you know, like I said, you know, I went on there and I put them on blast, you know, on Twitter. And uh, Chris Fallen came back. He's uh, one of the directors at Harp. I did nothing of the sort. Get your facts straight before posting accusations. Um, and I told him, I said, Bob had Sue do it. You know, she's retracted the copyright claim. We spoke on the phone and, uh, in private messages, which I will not reveal, uh, Chris Fallen, you know, really, you know, said that I'm a threat to his job, his livelihood, that they could shut harp down because of some of the comments they're seeing just the most asinine, stupid comments that I've ever heard come out of any scientist. Um, he acts like he's never read a comment on YouTube before or seen people get trolled on Twitter or doesn't know what fake accounts look like. But regardless, 
Um, you know, when they did retract it, I said, thank you to Sue and Bob McCoy from UAF videos back online. And I did blur out the staff pictures and the university of Alaska Fairbanks liked my reply. So a little piece in the upper West. Um, but the, the point I'm trying to make here is this is what, what makes it impossible for us. I mean, when when you've got all this secrecy already surrounding projects like you know weather modification ionospheric modification um what's to make these guys want to come out of their cave and speak to the public when every time they do they're called a luciferian or they're told you know we should hang all of them you know they're killing us we should you know which implies we should kill them um, the level of discourse is in the potty to say the least. And I'm sick of that part. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't want anything to do with that part. So, you know, my channel, you know, it, it, it's grown slowly. You know, I'm at 14,689 subscribers. Like I said, I could, I could, you know, put it well over a hundred thousand overnight if I just start making fear porn, but that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to tell the truth about these topics. You know, one of my best viewed videos has only got 143,000 views and that was published in 2014. Um, and you know, I've had multiple scientists contact me and say, you know, you nailed it. Everything you said in there was true. So good, good, good on that. That doesn't stop people from 445 comments, you know, trying to keep up with all of these comments and people making death threats and, all of that sort of stuff, you can't stop it. Um, so I, I literally just released this, Ionospheric Heaters, Space Weather Control and Geophysical Warfare. And it's a, it's a PowerPoint presentation. You can watch the video on YouTube. Um, I just published it November 14th. I, I please watch the video um, because I'm trying to separate facts from fiction. You know? Um... And the problem is that, you know, people will always hear what they want to see here. You know what I mean? It's called confirmation bias. But over here on the sidebar of every single page on Climate Viewer is attack ideas, not people, and a quote by Carl Sagan. One of the saddest lessons of history is this. If, we, if we've been bamboozled long enough, we tend to reject any evidence of the bamboozle. We're no longer interested in finding out the truth. The bamboozle has captured us. It's simply too painful to acknowledge, even to ourselves, that we've been taken. Once you give a charlatan power over you, you almost never get it back. And this comes from my propaganda page. And my propaganda page is about propaganda, fake news, and activism. You know, and how fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. So when you have a whole bunch of people, especially on social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, who have a vested interest in, you know, getting likes, getting views, um, who are making money off those views, fear sells. Fear sells in politics. Fear sells in business called FUD, Fear, Uncertainty, and Doubt. And all of this is done with words, or as I like to refer to it, slave speak, and the mental plantation. Um, Kanye West started to, to you know, talk about the mental plantation, and suddenly the world was on fire. But that's just the case, you know, that the anatomy of slave speak is a field guide to language that maintains a master-slave relationship. And one of those words is chemtrails. Um, another is harp, apparently, because suddenly every single, you know, facility in the world that has more than one tower sticking up the air is a harp. Um, and they are all evil by nature. Um, and therefore, the people that work them are evil. So, I, you know, that's just it's, just, it's just an asinine way of thinking. Ideas are more powerful than guns. 
We would not let our enemies have guns. Why should we let them have ideas? Joseph Stalin. Language creates spooks that get into our heads and hypnotize us. It is hard to fight an enemy who has outposts in your head. Okay? So, the most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. And that's really where we're at. That there have been so many people that for so long have pushed narratives about chemtrails, about harp, that, you know, this is really unfucking your brain is almost impossible. It is simply too painful to acknowledge even to ourselves that we've been taken. So I was one of those people back in 2012. I believed everything I read. Um, and I've, you know, really come to look at things differently. What I realize now is believe nothing you hear and only half of what you see. And I think that that's a good mantra. Um, you know, Marcus Aurelius said it, Edgar Allan Poe said it, but you know, Marcus Aurelius said it as well. Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is perspective, not the truth. And perspective, you know, really goes back to your personal beliefs plus what you hear and see determine your reality. So if you believe that the people that work at Harp are Luciferian, evil individuals, um, then you are dehumanizing them and their people, just like you and me. Um, and once you dehumanize a person, whether it be political, whether it be religious, or whether it be scientific, there are things you can do to someone who is not human that you would never do to someone you love like your family. And that's, that's how, you know, all of the, you know, major, you know, cullings of people around the world have ever happened is that you dehumanize your opponent. They're no longer human and you have no problem killing them. And I want people to remember that at all times that, these are people, even the people working at Harp, and the people working at Harp now, for the most part, they're they're no longer military. They're college students, and they're people with jobs, and they're curious. And though I don't approve of ionospheric modification, I don't approve of weather modification. If it was up to me, all of it would be illegal. They'd never do it again. But that doesn't change the fact that you still need to be able to engage with these people. And that's what I try to do. I try to talk directly to them, ask questions to the scientists, keep an open dialogue. That dialogue gets severed when, you know, people in my comments are saying things like, let's burn this mf -er down, or let's hang them all. Um, you know, if you, if, if you have that frame of thought why don't you go hang yourself because you are the problem um people that advocate violence are the ones who are shutting down free speech and the ability to have conversations based in reality and i want to try to change that that's what i've always tried to do since i created climateviewer.com is change that and I'm, you know, taking it so far as now, um, I'm literally going through 227 articles on climateviewer.com and I'm removing the word chemtrail from every damn one of them and replacing it with contrail. Because if I'd want to be taken seriously, I'd rather be taken seriously by the scientists and the policymakers that I intend to change their opinion than the public's because for the most part, the public, at least the public following me, um, a lot of them are freaking lunatics and drug addicts and people who spend all day long trolling the internet for something to get, get you know, a rise up their fear leg. And that's not my job. I ain't your info fucking tainment. 
I'm an activist. So what I hope to do is continue to have an open dialogue with scientists, with politicians, with lawmakers, policymakers, so that we can bring some real change and transparency to this situation. That's why I proposed the Environmental Modification Act. Um, the whole purpose of it was to bring transparency to this thing. And how the hell am I ever going to do that when I've got people, you know, tossing death threats left and right on my videos? It's just not going to happen. I want an act to end atmospheric experimentation without notification because we're never going to get to a place where geoengineering, uh, the sky, where weather modification activities, where ionospheric space weather modification could be illegal if we can't even get them to be honest about when they're doing it now. So I'm taking baby steps towards that. And if we get transparency and then we can see that there really is a cause and effect, hey, they turned harp on and it steered, you know, the weather, which in my seven years of watching harp, I have never, I've seen one case where I knew harp was on and I saw clouds deflected around it. And that was on climateviewer.org climate viewer 3d that's why i put all those atmospheric sensors in there was to try to catch them in the act and unfortunately for me i didn't record that one situation but it was very clear to me because i map out these heaters i know where they are and if i see a weather front slam into a wall and take a right hand turn going around them then we can actually see some weather modification short of that this is all speculation and there's a hell of a lot of speculation. So I don't want to be part of the speculating crowd. I want to be part of the bringing facts, um, not fear porn and not fiction. And I certainly don't want to be a part of the, you know, let's hang them all uh, crowd or every contrail is a chemtrail and it's a government depopulation agenda. I think all that's bullshit. Um, I've said it many times. I believe 90% of what we see when in the sky is air, air, airplane pollution. And I have proof that the military and CIA have intentions to modify cirrus clouds. I can prove that with FOIA's Freedom of Information Act requests. I can prove that with presentations like the one by Doc, Dr. Arnold Barnes Jr. at the Philip air, U.S. Air Force Phillips Lab saying we can create and suppress cirrus slash contrails so current capabilities 1997 we making we can make clouds or we can make them go away um so there is a difference between military operations and what we're seeing in the sky when it's delta airlines and southwest airlines anybody with a brain should know that and like i keep saying you know most of what i see is one part atmospherics, one part chemistry. And that chemistry is very complicated. And very few people understand it. And even fewer who are in this movement understand it. Um, or want to, for that matter. So, is this... I got a quote, a uh, question. Is this a complete change of your perspective? No! This has my, been, been my perspective all along. I've said since the very beginning that... I believe that there is no transparency in the world of atmospheric experimentation and modification. I want transparency. Um, there was, uh, after the Operation Popeye, the Vietnam War, when uh, Henry Kissinger and company did weather warfare over Vietnam, there were a couple things that happened. One of them was the Weather Modification Reporting um, Act of 1972, which requires in the United States that if you're going to modify the weather, you have to report it to NOAA and the Department of Commerce. There's two forms you have to fill out. And on a state-by-state -state basis, there are different laws that are associated with that and loopholes and all of that. But the problem is, even in America, with that law, there's still no way to 
know in advance before the experiments happen that they're happening. And that's what I'm trying to push for is that you have to give public notice on a one website worldwide in any country before you modify the weather or climate that you have to give notifications so that if you hurt people, property, or do permanent damage to the climate, it is known, okay? It is known. And that's what we're trying to push for here is, you know, that I want to know when it's happening. I want to know who did it so that there's accountability. Why? Why do I want to know that? So it is known. <laughs> I mean, pretty, pretty simple. If it is known, then we have accountability. Then we can, you know, if somebody did a cloud seeding project over your farm and your farm gets destroyed, then they had a hand in it. Whether they caused it or not, they had no business screwing with that storm. They may have intensified it. It is known. Um, and that's what I'm shooting for, you know, just some straight up honesty, trust, but verify as, a um, Ronald Reagan would say. And right now we have neither, we have n no trust, um, as exhibited by all of the comments that I see where people are like, these people are Luciferian, evil sons of bitches, and they should all die. Um, you know, I'm talking to the people from Harp on the phone and they're like, we're in fear for our lives. Um, Chris Fallon's like, I could lose, you know, my job and we could actually have to shut Harp down. And, you know, there's part of me that's like, well then shut it down. Bravo. One less ionosphere keter. And at the same time, I'm like, what do I do with that? You know? Um, my goal here is transparency. If, there's a great quote, that which can be destroyed by truth should be. And I tinker with that one a lot because, you know, I don't know that it always applies. But if telling the truth about what you're doing at heart about how you create ELF and ULF waves, about how you create artificial air glow, how ELF waves affect the Schumann resonance, how EMF affects human health. Um, you know, if, if telling the truth about that can make it go away, then it should. So take that, Chris. Sorry, bud. You were a real ass in the direct messages on Twitter. Despite that, I will not be sharing them with the public because I do respect the privacy of the scientists I talk to. Regardless, um, what I'm trying to say is that in order for us to maintain, at least for me to maintain my dignity, my pride, and my ability to continue to um, you know, be able to discuss openly and honestly with scientists about these very secretive, you know, programs, you know, the only way I'm going to be able to bring you the truth, because nobody else is, nobody else is even freaking trying. You find one YouTube channel anywhere that's trying to do what I'm doing and I'll shake your fucking hand. There is nobody. So when I'm gone, all those people are left with is the fear porn artists. So just remember that there ain't a single other channel out there that is trying to have an open dialogue with scientists, understands the terminology, understands the science, and is trying to have a real discussion about it. And if this continues, and I keep hearing things from scientists like, you're part of the problem, I could really become part of the problem. I could really become part of the problem. Um, <laughs> even the debunkers know that they're like, you don't even believe in chemtrails. Eh, I don't, I don't believe that everything's a freaking chemtrail. I call chemtrails, many things, chemtrails from space. If you're shooting barium and lithium and strontium, sulfur hexafluoride and other heavy metals from sounding rockets, that is a chemical trail. That's a chemtrail. Um, I, for the longest time I would refer to 
cirrus clouds made by planes as chemtrails because they are chemtrails. They're chemical trails of soot, carbon black, sulfur dioxide, and a shitload of metals. So, but at this point, it's not helpful. It's just not helpful because at the end of the day, it's a deal breaker for, you know, the scientists. They have that bamboozle problem too. They're bamboozled into believing that the word chemtrail means depopulation or tinfoil hat wearer. So the language you choose is important. And in that language, it cannot be violence. And if it's, if it continues to be, you know, violent rhetoric on my videos, then I'm going to spend all my damn day going through my video comments just to make sure that freaking lunatics aren't on there threatening to hurt the people I'm talking about, which is like this double-edged sword. I've got very little time um, as it is, and I don't feel like adulting today, okay? But I have to. I mean, I, I have to make this video to say that it's it's time for people to grow the fuck up. And really, you know, like Dane, like Dane, what you tell my God, you know, um, don't get me started. There are enough people out there. Dane may be one of them, but there are many, many more um, who just preach the gospel of fear. And that fear causes people to act irrationally. And... I also want to state something for the record. I am not a scientist. I am just a curious individual. I've been reading this stuff for seven years now. I think I understand it pretty damn well. When I asked Chris Fallen from uh, the director of uh, HARP, I asked him, I said, hey man, that presentation I did, was there anything in there that you find to be factually inaccurate? Crickets. So apparently, this is pretty damn good. Everything in here, pretty darn good. I went through you know, the list of things it can do and what it can't do. And I was very blunt about all of it. And I gave references for every single bit of it. So you can't tell me that I didn't do my homework because it's all got links and it's all referenced very, very well. So... What's your real deal? What's your real problem? Your problem is that when I tell the truth about this stuff and I put all this stuff out there, suddenly there are people going, I can't freaking believe what I'm seeing. And, you know, I'm abhorred, you know, by this. And, oh, by the way, let's hang them. Now, I can understand all of the first comments, but the hanging them and let's destroy Harp is not cool. And I'm going to reiterate. There is a difference between the military operating harp and the University of Alaska operating harp. The military has access to all of this stuff that the you know kids and Chris Fallen have never read. And I mean, it was exemplified perfectly last night in our conversation, direct messages on Twitter. He acted like he didn't even know that you know that they were creating ulf waves at 2.5 hertz and i'm like this is from dennis papadopoulos's freaking slide bro i mean come on don't play stupid with me so you know that's why there's a space force um because space is where it's at you know that's why they you know dennis papadopoulos was like hey let's you know use harp as a way to suck radiation out of the sky um, this is Chris Fallen's own words right there on that slide. And I describe it perfectly. I use all of the different, you know, um, references and all that stuff to, to show people exactly what the hell's going on. And if you haven't seen this, go download the presentation yourself. Check the references. They're there. But I even say, heart cannot control your mind. And I get chastised by Fox News um, meteorologist about harp and mind control. I'm like, did you even look at the third freaking slide? Yes, I talk about the Schumann resonance and how harp can snuff it out and how that may have an effect on your brain because we're all linked to it. But does that mean it's mind control? No, harp cannot control your mind. It cannot make you go out and do something. That is stupid. It does 
have a possibility of screwing with your electrobiological circuits called your nerves, which produce hormones, which produce emotions, and therefore it can you know make you irritable or make you lose sleep at night. But mind control, not a possibility. So I, you know, I go through all of the stuff, laser developed atmospheric lens, you know, all this probing underground structures and, you know, geophysical warfare. If the secretary of defense, William Cohen can say that they can set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves, it's real 1997, shortly after harp was invented. And, you know, they say atmosphere above Japan was he heated rapidly um, before the magnitude 9 earthquake. The total electron content of the ionosphere increased dramatically over the epicenter. Well, guess what? We saw the 2.5 hertz tone that day during the Fukushima Daiichi uh, nuclear meltdown. And that 2.5 hertz tone, you know, Chris from HARP is like, we can't make that. I'm like, really? This is from Dennis Papadopoulos' own slides. Demeter satellite making, um, catching sheer Alvin waves from HARP at 2.5 hertz. Right here. And here is another one at Gakona, which is Gakona, Alaska, which is HARP. And there is a 2.5 hertz tone. Is it extremely loud? No. Is it extremely powerful? Doesn't seem extremely powerful. Those are Pico Tesla. Regardless, don't tell me that they can't create ultra low frequency waves. You're going to piss me off. So I'm just trying to keep it real. And I'm trying to, you know, have people, you know, just understand the big picture of this. And what do I get? I get smart ass comments from meteorologists and the director of HARP himself saying that I'm the freaking problem because people are commenting with death threats. So that's the problem. The problem is that everybody is extremely hyperbolic. Uh, nobody's really taking this sanely. Nobody really wants to talk about solutions. Um, I have my solution. It's the Environmental Modification Accountability Act. Uh, ask yourself when you're watching YouTube channels, um, is this an info fuck container or is it an activist? Because an activist is not only going to bitch about a problem, they're going to give you a solution. And my solution is far from perfect. I revise it constantly in my head. And the next time I get a full clear thought on it and that's better than what I have currently, I'm going to write that down too. But this is the best I can hope for right now is transparency and verification. And then try to be as transparent about what I do and as honest about the research that I put out there so that people are informed, so that I'm not part of the problem. Okay? I hope that you guys um, understand why I'm making this rant. Because I think it's deplorable that, you know, people up at the heart facility are scared for their lives and asking me to blur out freaking staff photos because people are threatening their lives. You know, as a YouTuber, I've had my life threatened well over 50 times. <laughs> so been there, done that homie. Um, but at the same time, you know, I got thick skin and an elastic heart and, uh, you know, I'll, I will survive, yada, yada, insert any other euphemisms you might think be are appropriate. But scientists tend to be timid, uh, you know, creatures, and they scatter like cockroaches when the lights come on. And, you know, talking truth to power is a tough thing. And, hey, you know, they're always condescending as fuck, and I can deal with that. But... At the end of the day, I know exactly what I'm talking about. I wouldn't be saying this stuff otherwise. And I want to be able to continue to have open discussions with these scientists so that we can really find common ground and bring some accountability, some transparency to all of this. 
And all of that will be shut down if the sock puppet fake account trolls that try to control control the narrative, try to get other people to go along, um, agent provocateurs. You see him in black at the Antifa thing. He's the, the first one up there throwing the brick through the window. And then every other freaking moron behind him is like, yeah, I'm going to throw a brick too and let's burn Berkeley down. Um, that's not the way we're going to solve this. The way we're going to solve this is with truth, understanding, and open dialogue and pragmatic solutions. So I hope that you guys will follow that method so that we can actually get some accountability, some transparency from the hidden world of climate modification, weather modification, and space weather control. That's the end of my rant for today. Um, first time I've ever disabled comments on a video, and I'm only doing it because they cried so much about you know the thing. I asked uh, Chris, what do you what's the solution here do you want me to disable the comments he wouldn't even give me a straight answer so i disabled the damn comments anyway i did not disable the comments on my presentation video i will be trolling it for um you know people who are making <laughs> death threats or destroy the facility comments um it's it's a tough job I have so little time as it is. I hate having to go through every freaking comment every freaking day to make sure some lunatic hasn't said something completely stupid. Um, I've even got one guy who's been calling me a fucking Jew um, for the last five videos who's got an entire YouTube channel devoted to anti-Semitism, which I don't understand at all. Um, you know, just groupthink is evil. Groupthink is pure evil. There has never been one group of people that are all the same. Every single person is unique. So you cannot say all Jews, all Christians, all Muslims, all Democrats, all Republicans, you know, all Clemson fans, all Carolina fans. You know, I'm in South Carolina. Um, you hear it a lot in football. Um, this whole us versus them Hegelian dialect, you know, left right paradigm bullshit needs to end. And I certainly don't want to be part of the problem. So I hope that you guys will understand that that's why I'm making this video is to clarify my position. I intend to have an open dialogue with the scientific community. I have been cited in major journals. I've been cited by David Keith. Um, even though he's a geoengineer and he knows exactly where I stand on geoengineering, he has cited climateviewer.com in one of his published papers. Um, and I would like it to continue to be that way. So please help me by, you know, if you guys see somebody acting freaking stupid and making death threats, realize that they are either a lunatic or paid to be a lunatic. And that's called an agent provocateur. No more provocateurs on my channel. Um, and please remember that I'm bringing all this information because information is powerful. And with great power comes great responsibility. So please, for the love of God, attack ideas, not people.